How's it going everybody? Welcome to Hardware Overload and my look at the new Gigabyte B860 Gaming X Wi-Fi 6E motherboard. Uh, this is of course for the new Intel CPUs and more a budget uh, board where the motherboard costs more than a CPU. <laughs> Luckily that's not the case for this one. So quickly going over the pricing for the board. It is retailing for around $190 or 5,500 grand for Euro South Africa. So it's pretty affordable. So it's a perfect match if you want to pair it up with something like the Ultra 5 or even the Ultra 7 uh, CPU, new CPUs from Intel. Now for this video, it's just going to be an unboxing and an overview of all of the features and everything. So let's quickly get into that. All right, so quickly to get the board out of here. We actually also have our CPU here. So we have the Ultra 9 CPU. Not that we're going to use it now, but it, it is in there. All right, so... Inside the box, we have our Wi-Fi antenna, which is a new design from a Gigabyte, which is pretty cool. We'll go over. We have our SATA cables. We have some rubber pads. And then we have another set of rubber pads and then our manual. So nothing but too crazy going on in there. All right, so here we go. Nice black and white uh, color scheme going on, fits <laughs> the theme of the set very nicely. So we have a, a nice set of uh, silver and white accents going on for our VRMs, for our IO cover here, for our M.2s. So it doesn't go too crazy with all of the plastic all around the board and everywhere. So yeah, pretty tamed in that department. Underneath, you don't really get anything there. So let's quickly move on uh, towards our CPU here. So again, this is the LGA 1851 socket, which is for the new Core Ultra CPU use that's inside there now so again a perfect match if you want to pair it up with uh, the core ultra 5 or core ultra 7 cpus i think the 9 is a bit over the top uh, but uh if you really wanted to you could probably uh, get away with that now just to be clear this board only supports the latest core ultra cpus it doesn't support the previous i7s i9s i5s anything uh, any of those those ones are gone now unfortunately <laughs> kind of miss the i range already because the ultra name i'm not too crazy about it but anyway so it only supports the Ultra CPUs at the moment. We'll also see how it supports it in the future. If the new Ultras that's coming out will also support the 181551 socket, we will see, but hopefully it does. Now, along with that, you do also have a couple of AI overclocking features. Now, AI is everywhere, of course. So you do have a Aorus's AI Snatch and HyperTuner uh, BIOS. So the Aorus AI Snatch, I'm not exactly sure if it's going to support this board, but on the website, it does say it it will it's just not out at the moment yet but with that it will automatically overclock your cpu and your ddr5 memory with just a single key press and on the side it says it can boost performance up to 20 percent now of course that's in a perfect scenario you wouldn't necessarily get uh, that high of a performance out but i have used some of their overclocking the ai overclocking features before and it does a pretty good uh, job where it looks at all of uh, the thermal headroom and the power and everything and uh, con concentrates all of that and gives you a nice increase in performance without you needing to do anything, which is always a nice, especially if you don't know how to manually overclock. And then also you do have the HyperTuner BIOS, which just optimizes your memory. So it's going to overclock your memory as well, where you, again, don't need to do that much. Now, moving on towards our VRMs here, we do have a pretty nice uh, setup going on here. So it's a 12 plus one plus a two power stages so that's a reasonable set if you want to overclock your i7 see so used to say i7 your core your ultra 7 cpu so with intel's uh, turbo boost uh, you'll be able to get a pretty nice uh, boost in performance and again also with the ai overclocking from a, a gigabyte themselves so you'll uh, just have to take a look at your temperatures of course always just keep that in mind you can do that with the hw info uh, software so yeah just take a look at uh, that but i don't think it's going to be a problem if you go for again the ultra 7 uh, ultra 9 i don't think so because especially you only have a single 8 pin for your cpu power so i don't even think that'll supply enough power for your core ultra uh, 9 cpu so just keep that in mind now moving on towards our memory we do have a four a ddr5 dim slots here that does support a maximum of 256 gigs and a clock speeds of up to 9000 megatransfers per second so pretty quick 
Now, I don't think you'd necessarily go that high because the memory on its own is probably going to cost more than the board and the CPU that you're getting. So yeah, anything around like the 6,000 range, I think that's going to be perfect. But it's always just a good to also go check out a Gigabyte's supported memory list on their website. So you can just see that if the RAM you're getting or you're using is actually supported and just check if you're going to get all of the performance out of your memory kit. Some of them, even though they're not on the list, will work. But it's always just good to be a safe than sorry. Now, before we continue, just a reminder to you guys that I do have multiple uh, channels. I have a hardware overload for all of our hardware components, gaming overload for all of our peripherals and monitors and gaming setups, and then also an unbox overload where I usually do my unboxings on, but for now, just doing the hardware on this channel. So if you want a lot more content, definitely check out the, the other channels with the link in the video description. Now, moving on towards our PCI Express slots here. So we do have uh, three of them, but only the top one is PCI Express Gen 5 and does also feature their shield design as well for our heavier gpus now again this one is a full size 16x slot gen 5 but the bottom two are peace express gen 4 1x slot so even their full size they only run at 1x speed so yeah they're good enough for a capture card or something like that nothing also not a major capture card but for your standard olgato capture card that's going to be fine and again you do have two of them and then also our top slot does a feature a gigabyte so easy a latch plus so when you press the button over here it's going to release your gpu so when you install it again it's going to lock it in place and you can just press that and it's going to release the gpu it's always a nice feature it was on the previous boards as well i've seen some of the other brands have a different design now uh, but i still like the button it just makes everything super super easy you don't have to fiddle around with the screwdriver and everything to get your gpu out so very a nice addition still and then the bottom ones are still pretty standard so you'll have to do them manually <laughs> Then moving on towards our M.2, so we do have a three M.2s here, and this is also the first time that I'm seeing that there was the Easy Latch Plus as well. So for previously, you had to either unscrew them or some of the other brands have a different mechanism to open it up, but usually also the bottom ones, they still need you to actually use your screwdriver and screw out all of the screws, which is also annoying. It's not the biggest drawback, but with now with this one, you have their Easy Latch Plus, which is you select slide that to the side and it can take it out just like that so super super easy and same with the bottom one down here that's actually really nice i do appreciate that the bottom one can do that as well and not to just the top slot all right so got my m.2 so i can quickly show you guys how their easy latch as works as well so you can just slide it put it in there and it's going to lock it in place easy and simple so also just move it to the side it's going to open it up and all three of them have this feature so just like that super super easy you don't have to worry about those tiny bloody screws <laughs> falling out especially if you if it's already inside your system so that is a, a nice feature now as for the specifications again the top one is a peace express gen 5 so full speed and everything and the bottom two are peace express gen 4 all right, now, while I put all of this back, cow? <laughs> you, can, you guys can probably hear the cow outside moving. So if you guys are enjoying these videos so far, I do hope you are. Please do all of the jazz for the liking and the subscribing and all of that. And if you guys have any products you would like me to also feature on this channel and even on the other channels, let me know down in the comments below, but you can even tweet at me or expose me as well. And I see if I can get that arranged for you. And moving towards our IO here on the side, we do have our integrated IO cover, which is always nice. Nice, what? what was that it's always nice <laughs> we have a four usb a 2.0 type a port we have a hdmi 2.1 a display port version 1.4 we have a usb a four that doubles as a display port and that runs at what 40 gigabits per second so crazy crazy fast we have our usb 3.2 uh 5 gigabits per second we have our 3.2 gen 2 uh, 10 gigabits per second always need to just make sure on what speeds they are and also we have our 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and then we also have our easy plug wi-fi which i'll show you guys now and then our standard uh, three audio connections so a uh, no sp diff out for that so this is the first time that i'm seeing their easy a uh, plug wi-fi antenna so all you need to do is just take the antenna and uh, plug it in there's uh, no cable anymore so that's up to you if you like the cable or if you didn't 
if you were able to actually mount it a bit further away from your case to get better signal this one is just going into back and sliding up so yeah that is up to you if you like that or if you don't um i can see the benefits of it actually having like the cable to actually mount somewhere else on the side of your case at the top or whatever but um i don't think it's going to be the biggest a problem then moving on towards all of the other connectors on the board and starting with our CPU here, we only have an 8 pin CPU power. So that only provides around 150 watts. So we'll have to take a look at our CPU and if it actually is enough power for that CPU. So the Core Ultra 7, I believe, should be enough. Um, at Core Ultra 5, definitely. The Ultra 9, I don't think so. But also, this is a budget board, so I don't think you're even going to go for the Ultra 9. But anyway, I, I'm not sure about overclocking for the Core Ultra 7, though, because they do use quite a bit of power. But I'll also just quickly check for you guys and just slide it down here somewhere uh, just to make sure, because I haven't actually checked out that yet. Now, moving on, we have our one two three four five six pwmf fan header so you do have one back there as well for your extractor fan then moving on we have one two three addressable rgb headers five volts and there are 12 volt uh, rgb header as well this one almost looks like a rgb header but i'm i don't think it is it looks to be something with uh, the audio connectors so just keep that in mind up here as well this is not a power button it's a q a flash a button so just keep that in mind if you want to flash your bios so that is up uh, there next up we have our 24 pin motherboard power we have our five gigabits per second front panel uh usbs or 10 gigabit per second front panel type c usbs uh, I think I missed this, but you have a four SATA ports as well for storage. Down here, we have our front panel connectors. We have a two USB 2 headers. Then we have an additional connector down here, which I'm not exactly too sure what it is. So I'll just check for you guys. But that is a pretty much it for all of our connectors as well so that's pretty much it for my quick look at uh, the uh, gigabyte b860 gaming x wi-fi 6e motherboard now you can go check a uh, gigabyte has so many different options for the b860 boards and for the other boards as well so there's plenty of other options for you if you don't necessarily want to go for this board exactly you can go for the m board as well the b860m gaming x board a wi-fi as well so and the non-wi-fi board so you do have two options there and just there Aura's boards and everything else so there's so many different options but overall it's a pretty a nice more budget a board if you want to go again for a core ultra 5 or core ultra 7 uh not too much thousand uh, 190 dollars or 5500 grand and you do get enough uh, features the only thing i'm not too sure about again is the top m.2 slot and uh, the pizza express slot sharing bandwidth where one is going to be disabled so again i'll just make sure about that one but if that's the case that's the only complaint that i have for the board so yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. A big shout out to Gigabyte for sending me the board over for our overview unboxing video. Just a reminder to go check out the other channels as well. There's plenty more content to come over the couple of weeks. So yeah, definitely check those out. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.